All right, I think we have maybe one more thing to talk about. Vapor pressure, or vapor pressure, as John Dalton originally coined the term, because he was English, like how they write check with the Q-U. <laughs> no. All right, joke number two to Bob for the day. <laughs> vapor pressure is a liquid's propensity to leave the liquid state and become a vapor, all right? All liquids have a different vapor pressure, and these engineers that study psychrometry like to take a liquid and determine what its vapor pressure is. But it's different from water to, to well, rubbing alcohol is a good example. Everyone here has had an immunization or had blood taken and had the little, the nurse do the alcohol wipe thing on your arm, right? Mm -hmm. And as soon as they're done, how does your skin feel? It, yeah, it cools off, doesn't it? It has a cooling effect. That is because isopropyl alcohol has a very high vapor pressure. It will leave the liquid state very quickly to become a vapor, whereas water has a lower vapor pressure. When something quickly leaves the liquid state and becomes a vapor, it's called evaporative cooling, and that's why you feel that on your skin. So what I've got is I've got a couple of cups here, and one of these is isopropanol and one of these is water. And normally, I line it up so I can keep it straight, but knowing the jokers that we have around here, sometimes the guys like to come up and switch these <laughs> for my presentation, you know, because that's what happened with the fire department last time. We're not going to go into it in too much detail. So I need to determine which of these is which, all right? They're both optically the same. They're both colorless liquids. It's isopropanol, so I can't drink it, right? That's not that kind of alcohol. I could use a match or a cigarette lighter, but again, the fire department shows up, and apparently I'm fired if that happens one more time. So how can I determine which one is which? And the answer is vapor pressure. If I just take my fingers, put one in each, pull it out, wait a minute, this one's the isopropanol. So thank you for not moving it this time, guys. I guess they learned their lesson from last time. And this one's water. So vapor pressure can actually be used to identify one liquid from another. But here's the important thing about vapor pressure as it relates to what we do at BetCorp. And it's this. This is a chart of vapor pressure. For those of you that hate the metric system, this is in TOR, which is the metric unit of pressure. And this is in degrees centigrade along the bottom also metric. So, you know. OK. And this actual chart in terms of the numbers doesn't mean anything. The only thing I want you to take away from this is the shape of the curve. It's an exponential curve. That means as you go along the bottom axis, it moves up quicker and quicker. It's growing exponentially. And what that means is each little increase in temperature, let's look at 40 to 60 we only get this much growth in vapor pressure. But then we go 20 more from 60 to 80, and we get more growth. From 80 to 100, we get even more. Each little bit of temperature that you can add to liquid water will increase its vapor pressure dramatically over the previous bit of, of temperature that you added to it. And that becomes critical to what we do and when we put heat on things as we dry them, and Scott's going to go into more detail about that in the next couple of sections. 